Hello, good evening. It is Thursday night and it's The Late Show. I hope that you watched last night's Late Show because it was very informative. If you didn't, please go to our uh, video on demand and uh, look for that, The Late Show and the date of yesterday, whatever that was. Uh, but let me just uh, introduce my wife again, um, the lady that I see every now and again. It's my wife, uh, <laughs> Leslie Condon. <laughs> OK, I'm very, very happy to be here this evening. I'm here to read out your emails and texts and comment where I can. OK, very good, Leslie. Um, lots of things happening, as we know, as we speak. Um, there's, uh, what was, what's the latest that you picked up this evening just on yeah, uh, just what Netanyahu this is... and uh, his cabinet and what's going to happen this evening and what's already perhaps happening right now as we speak? I was just breaking news that I saw on a news channel. It says uh, Netanyahu vows that his country will stand alone if it has to after Biden's weapons supply threat. Um, he said that he'll, it'll stand alone in its war against Hamas after the US threatened to stop sending some weapons to its ally. President Joe Biden earlier said America would halt offensive arms supplies to Israel if it attacks the Gaza city of Rafah, where hundreds of thousands of civilians are sheltering from bombardments elsewhere in the Palestinian territory. And the Israeli Prime Minister said in a video, if we have to stand alone, we stand alone. If we need to, we will fight with our fingernails, but we have much more than fingernails. So well, There's a breakdown in the peace talks and uh, Hamas has... Uh, I've got to say, from my perspective, is playing games because there was going to be uh, a, sw a prisoner swap um, for exchange for those that were taken captive on October the 7th. Um, I have something that I'm really quite delighted in a way to have found because uh, many years ago, probably back in around circa 1999, uh, the year 2000, I came um, across this tape that I've been often mentioning on Revelation TV, and that is where uh, there are two cameramen, one's a Palestinian cameraman, uh, who obviously was able to take uh, video uh, and show what was going on from the Palestinian side, and also uh, the opposite, obviously, from Alan Bernstein, who I can actually mention by name. I can't mention the Palestinian cameraman's name because uh, he provided footage which sometimes was extremely shocking to see what was really going on. And I mentioned it in times past, as I said, and, and I think, and I'm glad that I've actually found one of those tapes. It hasn't got everything on it. Uh, like, for example, uh, it hasn't got the Palestinians being thrown off the top of the roofs by the Hamas, uh, by their own people. Um, but it also uh, hasn't got included where and I'm hoping to find that, where those that supposedly had been shot dead uh, by Israeli soldiers, uh, the Palestinians uh, were taken into an ambulance, and about 10 minutes later they came out smoking um, cigarettes and having a laugh. So some of these tricks, if you like, or uh, deceptions do go on, but that's suppose uh, it's nothing new in, t in war. But I do want to say that with that news that you've just read, Leslie, Israel's like uh, the canary in the mine. And if that canary dies, uh, it's going to be disaster for the rest of the world, uh, for the de democ democratic um, governments of this world. Uh, you will see Sharia law uh, just everywhere, totally in the uh, Middle East, and uh, th that Israel is, in fact, our saving um, grace. Uh, because if you know the scriptures, it's easy to understand. But if you don't know what the Bible his, or the history of the nation of Israel, then you will perhaps, uh, can I say, be a little bit more enlightened if you stay tuned to Revelation TV because we show a lot of the history of Israel, particularly the promise, which has uh, just upgraded that. I've uh, been able to just bring that back to life a little bit. It was uh, shot in 1999 again. Uh, we spent three weeks there, four weeks actually, and uh, a lot of the history is on there, going all the way back to Abraham, you know, so when there was that, uh, you know, division uh, between Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob, and uh, who got the promise? Well, it was Isaac and Jacob, and therefore the, the nation of Israel uh, was 
what came out of that eventually. Anyway, before we go to uh, segment one, um, I'm just going to warn you there are scenes of dead bodies, uh, so that will come up on your screen throughout this first part, just to make sure that nothing comes as a shock. But this is from uh, the Jewish uh, cameraman. Uh, he's very fair about it, and uh, some of the things might even upset uh, some of our regulars by what he has to say. But he got on he, he, with his uh, counterpart, who was also taking the, the video from the Palestinian side. Uh, they were good friends, and yes. hopefully they still are today. So w w which conflict was this? This would have been around about the time, uh, t time of Arafat. Uh, so uh, it would have been probably the second intifada or something like that. I'm not ex around 1999, 19, uh, 2000. 2000. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but this particular cameraman, as you'll find from the history that he gives, um, has been following it for about 40 years at that point. So he has a lot of knowledge and information. And uh, may I say, he has a, he has a gen genuine concern for Palestinians as well. So let's go to segment one uh, with Alan Bernstein. Today I have a, an unusual guest. I have a cameraman who's uh, working in the Middle East. Uh, his name is Alon. Uh, Alon, welcome to the program today. It's a pleasure. Um, I hope it's going to be a pleasure, but uh, sometimes uh, working in the media, uh, it's, it's not always a pleasure, is it? The things that you see, you wish you probably hadn't. Where well, things got really rough lately, um I used to cover the Palestinian uprising since day one, and that's 12 years ago. I saw how things evolved there, and lately I find it very hard to go into the Palestinian areas um, after a serious instigation um, is going on in the mosques, and um, anybody can get hurt. Um, the approach of the Palestinian Authority towards journalism is, is that uh, any material that they don't like should be taken away from cameramen, sometimes under gunpoint. And um, things got really rough. There's a lot of shooting. Would the Palestinian or other um, cameramen also have the footage taken? if uh, it was something that the Palestinians didn't want to see? Uh, with the three soldiers uh, lynch in Ramallah, that happened like two weeks after this whole trouble started, uh, there, were, there were maybe 12 cameras around there. Um, only one Italian crew managed to get their material out. And uh, that just tells you where things stand. What is your experience with regards to people or the authorities' reactions to news cameramen there? And that 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 uh, the 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 behavior of the Palestinian Authority regarding journalism, journalism um, is typical to many uh, third world countries. But um, in what the, sense? in the sense that, that, that journalism is just as good as long as it serves you. Right. So if they, they are not ready to take criticism from anybody. The reason that I, I'm taking this opportunity to have you on the program is to try and help us all to get an understanding of how news, if you like, is manipulated. What we see on the television is what the editors decide to, sh to edit, and the way in which they edit portrays either one point of view or another. Now, what makes the difference? It's the same cameras, but have a different story at the end of the day. First of all, the fact that my camera is intimidated and the other camera can go freely to where things happen says it all. Interesting. So um, most of the coverage is done by Palestinians and cannot be done by people that have other point of view at the matters. Uh, but it's bigger than that. Um, what happens is um, Yasser Arafat created a whole bunch of photo opportunities. Yasser Arafat is, is an expert on, on news coverage. This guy is in power, so to speak, uh, for, for 40 years, for 30 years. So what you see here is, is uh, a leader that is 100% um, media oriented and this whole war is played to the cameras uh, another example is the fact that uh, what you see is children stopping tanks but the tanks are not there for the kids 
the Israeli, the Israeli army does not need tanks to uh, approach kids. The tanks are there because of uh, uh, constant live, um, live ammunition fired. At, at, at these tanks. Now you don't see that on the news. You see, um, over here we're, we're only seeing really the Israeli soldiers firing what appears to be at children. Why are they firing at children? Uh, children, and at first I want to say I regret any casualty from any side of this conflict. I, um, I think it's terrible that uh, young children are involved here and getting killed here. Um, but what happens is the, the Israeli soldiers outnumbered and sometimes they are cornered because this violence happens in so many different places and uh, the, the reaction force of the Israeli army cannot be large enough to deal with each situation. So you, many times you have four or five soldiers cornered by uh, like a mob. But what you're seeing, what the, the news shows us is that uh, these are just stone-throwing children. I mean, again, right. you know, this, the, the, how can the, they be so... They are, they, they are stone-throwing children. But somewhere around them, there are other people who shoot, who shoot at the same soldiers. But we're not seeing that on you the news. You don't see them because um, it's very hard to take their picture for reasons I just specified right, before. You wouldn't be allowed to go there. I don't go there and whoever goes there would not take these pictures right. of them shooting. Um, it's all about um, action pictures. Yeah. Action pictures. Uh, it's like I call it the Bang Bang Club. Um, news entered the field of entertainment and entertainment invaded the news. This is very dangerous because what you need for entertainment is simple, uh, good and bad characters, uh, simple story, lots of action, and that's about it. While history uh, and conflicts like in the Middle East are very, very complex and it takes a lot of perspective and understanding and intelligence that the people that do the media don't really have. They were not chosen for their brightness. They were chosen for their ability to give you a product that will really catch the eye and the ear. The virtual world and the real world are one. And it's hard to tell which one is stronger. This is not covering reality. This is making reality. This is affecting reality. I just told you um, that, that you have four opportunities created as four opportunities where thousands of people are clashing with armed soldiers for the sake of the picture. These children died so they would be on TV. This is terrible. I feel terrible about it. I, I, do, not, I do not put the blame now on any side at all, even though I think their parents has something to do with it. Well, I never seen an eight years old with strong political convictions. They just have to go and make a revolution. I've heard that this is done um, through the mosques and through the schools themselves, that they are train, teaching children um, this, this hatred of, of the Jewish people to such an extent that to take their life, and if they do take their life, that they will be forgiven in heaven and they will be martyred and be heroes. Now, you know, if you instill that into a young, uh, young culture, you, you are the, the results are what we see on the television, are they not? The Palestinians are third generation refugees. They have a legacy of being a refugee. They are the victim for 50 years. I am not saying now whether um, whoever did it to them was right or wrong. But I, you can definitely say that this group of people have a victim mentality. If you have the father telling the son, you are a refugee, and the son tells his son, you are a refugee, the, the 20th century was full of wars, was full of refugees. People were dislocated all over the world. Europe was destroyed. Millions of people lost their houses. And here, 
the, the wound, the rage, the anger is kept alive for political purposes. I am not saying Israel did not kick these people out of their houses. It def definitely did. It happened in a war, in a war, in, in, in few wars. This is history. This is too short time here to discuss. But why these people would not were not given new life somewhere where they can? The footage um, that um, we've got just here, just as an example, perhaps um, from your perspective uh, as an Israeli cameraman, could you actually um, talk us through some of this? Because and just these are things I don't think we see a lot of. Uh, <clears throat> this picture, uh, this this video was taken by me um, in '96 uh, from a window of a Jerusalem street, Jaffa Street, that was hit maybe eight times by major bombs like that. Um, 20 people died, around 10, 20 people died here. What you hear is the alarm of all the stores that had their alarm getting, you know, being triggered by, by the, the blast. And uh, the situation were described in, 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 in few of the reports as uh, the mighty Israeli army with tanks and helicopters attacking unarmed population that was demonstrating for its legitimate rights. Uh, these people don't look very unarmed to me. They look armed and dangerous. Whether Palestine should become or not, it cannot be dangerous Palestine. If Palestine will be dangerous, then it will be in a constant clash with Israel. These, if, the, if the Palestinians want the Israelis to leave their areas and let them build their own state, they should not, um, you know, practice so much um, armed struggle. You know, they should give up on the armed struggle and go back to the negotiation table. From your perspective, do you think it's a matter of um, a land issue or um, a state being established by the Palestinians that would satisfy them? I think it all has to do with what they told you before, and this is the, the victimizing of the Palestinians in one hand. Um, <clears throat> there is a real need to solve the Palestinian problem. It is a problem and Israel recognizes it. You have, uh, over the years, a lot of people who lost their uh, houses. This, this problem should be corrected. I mean, uh, on the other hand, there was so much uh, political manipulation going on around this conflict that the uh, majority who is peaceful on both sides cannot reach any um, accepted conclusion. Why do you think that is? I think extremism is very strong. You can see these pictures, for example, this is, was taken in the middle of, of one of the uh, Palestinian cities. All these flags represent Hamas, the same people that did all this um, terrorism on 96. In Lebanon? In, inside Israel. Oh, inside. And some Hezbollah flags. That means that there is a connection between, between the, the Hezbollah guerrillas in Lebanon and the Palestinians in Lebanon and the people inside. Here you see a show of sympathy with Saddam Hussein, who's a big hero in these areas. Uh, we talk about very strong anti-Israeli, anti-American sentiment. I think the very fact that Israel survived so far is a big miracle. Um, there were, there were so many obstacles to overcome. 
Okay, that's our first segment. Just a reminder, this was taken in around 1999, year 2000, uh, so around about the second intifada. Uh, but Leslie, having listened to that, I know we've probably got some problems with our emails, no, but fine, just to... Just, back. Oh, we are back. Okay, live at uh, revelationtv.com and the SMS number's on your screen as well. Uh, we had loads of emails yesterday and SMSs, so please do uh, continue to do, to um, make your points that you want to do. Um, and maybe you're in disagreement about things or you don't quite, quite understand some of the things. Maybe we could help you uh, with some of the history as well. But whatever it is, uh, let's go through uh, your emails right now. Okay, so let's say good evening to you, Satinda. He says, it was very disappointing to hear that the US will, will be withholding some military supplies to Israel if Israel went ahead with its full-scale invasion of Rafah. However, I must say, under Biden, it didn't exactly come as a surprise to me. I wonder how Israel will continue its war against Hamas without this support, especially as Israel is unlikely to stop at Hamas with Hezbollah breathing down their necks too. Russia was in a similar position, but with shady deals and the support of China, North Korea and Iran, it has been able to continue its illegal and unprovoked campaign. Let's hope that at this difficult and desperate time, Israel will look to the Lord rather than the US for support and strength. Heaven knows the Lord is willing and waiting. Yeah, and just to remind our viewers, if, we, if I may, is that there's a, over 100,000 Israelis uh, that have been displaced uh, and had to move into other accommodation in the northern part of Israel because of Hezbollah's uh, continuous rocket barrage of rockets into Israel. Uh, so this is uh, going on at the same time we're all talk, trying to talk about peace talks and this, that and the other. Um, Israel is still having to defend itself on uh, on its northern border and obviously from Iran as well because uh, they could at any moment send more uh, missiles that way, their way. Okay, uh, other emails. Let's okay, go. so uh, good evening to you, Sam. Um, Christianity is based on love. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it is is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Sam says, I think we need to fight this war based on scriptures. Do you know the Quran well, Howard? Are there any verses of the Quran that we can quote to show the difference between Christianity and Islam? And also, what are the rules of Sharia law? Can you explain? There's so many rules of oh my goodness, Sharia law. Yeah. I'm actually studying uh, again even today. I don't know whether we're going to get time on this program, but I do have a, a, a Muslim lady who actually um, questions uh, this particular person who's called, I'm trying to find it, I think he's called uh, Christian Prince. He, as a former Muslim, he knows his Bible inside out. He's become a Christian and he pulls apart uh, very easily uh, the the prophet Muhammad uh, from A, from being a prophet because he actually um, some of the things he shares there. But this Muslim lady, if I get a chance to show it this evening, I will, if not, uh, God willing, on the next late show, got lots of material. But really, the, the, you've picked on a great scripture. The Christian principle that Christ gave us is to love our neighbour as ourselves and to pray for our enemies, not to kill them. Whereas in the Quran or the Hadith, it says to kill the Jew wherever you find them and the Christian. We are uh, at the very least going to be dimitudes, dimmies, uh, which is a servitude under the Muslims uh, when they uh, come to power, which they will. When we got this happening in the United Kingdom now, so many mayors of different uh, you know, uh, cities or, or townships in, in the United Kingdom are now under uh, that um, a Muslim mayor, including what we have in London under Sadiq Khan. So, yeah, um, I would say that there is a, a great distinction. But the problem is, although Judaism and the nation of Israel hasn't got that same teaching of Christ yet in, in the main part by the Jews, so they have to defend themselves. And at the same time, um, they're actually helping the West 
to be defended as well. As I was saying earlier about the canary in the mine situation, that's what they are. But the, the promises are the prophecies in Zechariah chapters 12 through 14. Have a look at those. You'll see that Israel uh, has to bear the brunt of all the nations coming against it. But that's when the Messiah steps in. So when it gets to that point, uh, it's pretty much all over. <laughs> OK, uh, Jeremy in South Wales, good evening to you says, as Christians, we must ensure that Israel never has to stand completely alone. It's time for all believers in Jesus Christ to choose a side. And we really only have one choice, God and his nation of Israel. We must never, ever turn our backs on his people. I know, but how far do you go? We can't go to war. We can't take the lives of our enemies but we can pray for our enemies, that's what Jesus said, and that's what the distinction is. So, you know, to, to separate the, the three main religions, uh, you know, you've got the Muslims who are believing, following their uh, prophet, uh, Muhammad, who we'll find out really isn't the prophet, really, because he was foretelling things that had already happened, and we'll get to prove that point, uh, hopefully, in the next few weeks as well. Okay, I've just got one more at the minute. Uh, good evening to you, Dave. And he says, Howard, could you please remind me where I can download those maps that you produced a few weeks ago about how Israel has changed? Yes, um, with the particular ones concerning uh, the 12 tribes and everything, we don't have them as separates, um, but they are uh, involved. I think if you find... Uh, look up Jesus Speaks was a 15 minute video that I made and uh, you get those maps on there and also in The Promise, The Promise, um, that is uh, the program that my first documentary I made 30 years ago, 25 years ago, whatever it is, and um, that's got those same maps on, on there. And you can go to a video on demand on Revelation TV uh, website and look for The Promise and Jesus Speaks, okay, hopefully that help you. Okay, Jean says, thank you for the powerful late show last night. Truly powerful to hear the Israeli ambassador speaking as he did to the UN and he was bluntly truthful. Amazing work, uh, Revelation TV, says Jean. Yeah, and we'd mm. like to thank, uh, uh, I think it's the, the Israeli, uh, the Jewish boy who actually put that together yes. and was able to pick that up. I yes, think it was right. JTV. That's I think it, it is. I was trying okay. to think what it was called. Good yes. job that I've got some memory. There you, you go. You're not doing bad well. for 78. You're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, just to let's go to segment two of uh, Alan Bernstein's interview. It gets uh, more and more interesting as we go through this. So uh, this was found only today uh, did I come across this tape, and it had been there for like nearly 25 years. You've got colleagues that work on both sides. Um, if you like, and how do you get on with them? Oh, very well, very well. I, 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 um, I uh, don't think that any of the Palestinian cameramen that is working for the foreign press has um, is trying to um, create any kind of uh, a strong political message. The situation is bigger than than them. They are intimidated too. They are threatened too. And um, they have their own problems, but on a personal basis, we are the best friends. This is a no-win situation. The time for twisting arms is over. Bloodshed would not lead anybody anywhere. The only person who really thinks that bloodshed would lead him somewhere is Yasser Arafat and the extremists. Going back to you know some of, some of the things that are on on Arafat's television network here, what can you explain um, to us what's going on? Uh, what you see here is the fundamentalist, hardcore explanation to what this whole thing is about. Um, this guy says, fight the Jews wherever they are. Not even the Israelis, the Jews, the Jewish nation. And that I think means it also attacking mentioned. a Jew in London is just as legitimate as attacking an Israeli in the middle of Tel Aviv. Since the beginning of the Palestinian-initiated violence against Israelis in the past month, the Palestinians have consistently broadcast extreme incitement 
calling upon the Palestinian masses to harm Jews and Christians wherever they may be. Other um, speakers on behalf of, of Islam gave a much more moderate of, of the expression jihad. This guy is telling his own people, is basically go out there and kill Jews. I mean, I don't see how you can um, uh, interpret this any another, in any other way. Now, the Jews are the ones who are supposed to be negotiating the terms of the Palestinian state. This makes it very hard for Israelis to trust. So, Alon, just just to come back to this particular uh, video again, you know, can you explain what's going on here? You see, ten years old practicing with um, guns. Um, I think ten years old kids, no matter how extreme the political situation is, should be kept away from the front. Why do you think they're doing it with ten year olds? Is it because they're short of men? Or is it uh, maybe something else that's... Uh... I think that the whole concept of uh, the value of, of uh, human life is a, a little, a little um, different. Um, and I think they think that their cause is, is important enough to die for in any given age. To your uh, recollection, has... Ever the Israelis uh, done what the Palestinians here did to those soldiers uh, and mutilated their bodies? And the Israelis don't have this kind of anger in them. They do not have the terrible, holy, Muslim rage. This guy uh, is so hateful and he is a holy man. This is what I can't understand because even um, in Christian circles or any other sort of faith circles, you you wouldn't necessarily get uh, this hatred to to any any other person. Now, just here looking at this is a young boy. Do you think this young boy? Let me just rewind that, Alon. Um, here, I'm trying to imagine any one of my children at this age. You see, looks like an eight or nine year old, maybe maybe ten at the most. Um, saying that he will eat the flesh of his captors. Um, I just... Look. It also appears to me a little bit staged because, I mean, somebody wouldn't uh, be quite performing like that, I don't think, if it was coming from sincerity. I think it's coming from hysteria. Indoctrination? Now here, uh, this is quite interesting, we're seeing, for, for me for the first time, uh, Palestinian gunmen. Uh, not, please explain what you see, because this is... I wasn't um, there. This just shows you what kind of chaos um, prevails around the army posts. Uh, you see an army post, and um, you see a street, People are running back and forth, uh, children throwing rocks at the same time. There's shooting going on behind the children. It's uh, no, say this, behind is the very, children. this is a very strange kind of battleground. Um, the soldiers are coming under attack, but they don't know what really, what, what weaponry they should use. Uh, water cannons were suggested uh, many times. And maybe they are a good idea, but uh, once once real shooting is taking place, water cannons can reach very little, and the the kids are get in the middle. So there is a if there was no shooting from the Palestinian side, then I I would say bring water cannons and there would be no justification on earth to shoot rubber bullets. Hmm. Okay, just to remind you that this interview that I did uh, with this uh, Israeli cameraman and also um, his colleague who was a Palestinian cameraman used to send me um, footage uh, back then uh, 25 years ago 
so I could to get a, an idea what was going on, on from both sides. Um, but um, I just want to make clear, by the way, when the Israeli soldier is throwing what looks like a grenade, it's not a grenade, it's tear gas. It's just to help disperse the crowds. Uh, but often what happens, as you will see, uh, and some of the reenactments which I'm still looking for from the old days, where you see there's, uh, it's not quite uh, as it seems to be in front of the camera. So you've got the, a little bit of playing games uh, from the Palestinians, if I may say. OK, um, I've got one here. Um, thank you for agreeing to explain the Quran in future shows. I just wonder, what it, is, the, is the problem the Quran or the other extra writings, example, Hadith, etc. Mm -hmm. Where does the hatred of the Jews and the Christians come from? Similar to Yeshua's saying about scripture over traditions, example, extra writings, um, example, Midrash, etc. I just think we really need to know exactly where these ideologies come from and we need to quote and know the source, right. says Sam. Good, but that's why it's taking a lot longer for me to prepare these because um, you actually get the Quran or the Hadith actually uh, on the script there. Um, because AI, artificial intelligence, is also giving um, the, the letter um, and word uh, exactly of what's been said. Sometimes it isn't so exact. So because of the, um, if you like, the the language and especially when it goes into the Arabic but nevertheless I'm working on that so I can get as much information on the screen for you to be able to take on board what's been said um, and uh, you know so you could bypass as it were and make sense of the uh, the, the, the misspelling uh, of some of the uh, the names which is spoken about but the bottom line is that we are going to be looking carefully at what these um, the Muslim writings are about. It's quite interesting because when Muhammad started, I've got to I'll say it, I might be repeating myself to some of you, but when I first started to read the Quran uh, back in the early 2000s, I was actually uh, quite surprised and pleasantly surprised that Muhammad was trying to say to his people in those days, look, you know, because he did a lot of business with the Jews, he did a lot of business with Christians, and he said, if you want to know more about this book, you know, the Bible, Go to the Jews and the Christians. The people of the book. The people of the book, mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And um, he had great respect for us. Something happened somewhere along the line. Uh, maybe it's because he, he, he had a bit of a problem in containing his sexual appetite. And that's why you get a lot of these promises uh, uh, that uh, the Muslims men seem to go for is that uh, they're going to get 70 virgins if they can kill a Jew and a Christian uh, in paradise. Well, if little did they know, if, if they knew the scripture and that God's will and purposes, there is no marriage um, and there's no sexual activity in that sense from what we can gather because there's no need for procreation in God's new heaven and new earth. Um, there you go. So might help. Um, we'll get more of that as well when I get into the the way of being able to present you uh, these uh, writings and also these interviews that uh, the Prince Christian Prince um, gives and allows us hopefully to continue to show you. Okay, I've got a challenging one here for you, Howard, from Mary. Um, she says, "No book is as bad as the blasphemous Talmud." which is the uh, ancient Jewish writings, yes. isn't it? Yeah, the Old of, of the traditional of the Jews. Yeah. The viewer who said that we should support modern-day counterfeit Jews, who God warns us are the synagogue of Satan in Revelation 2.9 and 3.9, obviously that viewer is not born again and led in truth by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, OK. Well, uh, I mean, those are Jesus's words that are in, recorded there in the first person. Uh, he speaks, Jesus, about the synagogue of Satan because uh, at that time the church uh, had only just started. It was in the early days. I mean, um, the Apostle John uh, wrote on the Isle of Patmos uh, that whilst he was imprisoned there, uh, the book of Revelation through inspiration, and it was Jesus 
who gave it to the angel um, and gave it to John. And Jesus actually is basically the author. So when he's talking about the, the synagogue of Satan, he's talking about the, the Jews that are actually at that stage were actually practicing um, idolatry, uh, sexual uh, mis immorality. immorality and all of that sort of stuff. And he goes into also the, the churches, I think it's the seven churches as well, which were also uh, like the Laodicean church and um, some of the other churches as well, which were also practicing things which were not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, David says, um, Carl says, uh, good evening, Howard and Leslie. Seems tit for tat for me. The Hamas atrocities, then the IDF threatening to cut off the Palestinian children's water. Biden wants to distance himself from it all, says Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Carl, it, it is quite complex, really. But um, the ones that do love life are the Israelis. They don't want to kill. Um, and it's never been there their way of life. It's only they want to protect themselves um, and they're never the ones to take the initiative to cause a war or uh, a, a battle or to come against uh, their enemies. But they have the right to protect themselves and uh, God gives them that uh, right as well. All the way through the Old Testament you'll see that. But there has to be... Um, and if you, I think if you can tell that Israel does everything in its power to try to stop having to use force, whereas a mass does not stop at all and uses its own people as a shield to, and uses and indoctrinates its children to give it another sort of, um, you know, hiding behind uh, the children. As you can see, the children were carrying guns. You know, that's from the Palestinian cameraman that I got that sort of footage. So, you know, it isn't just stone throwers. Uh, against the tanks. It's children who also have uh, their guns. Okay, um, Paul says, um, good evening, Howard and Leslie, good evening to you, Paul. Um, I could hardly believe my eyes, he says. Some young lady walked past my car today in North Wales with a sticker on her bag displaying free Palestine. I felt compelled to com confront her, but for some reason I didn't. And he says, why, why, why? And I think he's meaning why did I not confront her rather than why yeah. was she yeah. um, displaying a sticker? Right. Um, and I think probably you and the mass, Paul. I mean, and yeah. you know, that means people. Uh, well, are... Palestine isn't a state, uh, and it's a it's a set of people. Um, mm -hmm. And if you go into the history, uh, and and also after we've sh shown this last uh, piece uh, this mo uh, this morning, this evening, um, you will actually see uh, how Jew and. Uh, um, Arab actually live together in peace and harmony today and, uh, and it is a shame that we're not seeing that. It's only Hamas that wants to control uh, its people and use their own people for their own political ends which is to get rid of the Jews and the Christians. That's it, bottom line. Until we're all gone, they'll never be happy. So it's not just a matter about setting up a Palestinian state. It's about getting rid of that ideology which is uh, fueling uh, their evil ends. Okay, Sam says that comment you just read from Mary says, um, this person, Sam says, is she saying that the Jews are not the real Jews? It's exactly what she's saying. Hmm. She's talking as them as counterfeit Jews. Yes, but they're not all. There will be counterfeit Jews, just as there Same are counterfeit... as counterfeit Christians. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. exactly. You know, yeah. the, and it's Some very... Jews are very, very secular, very liberal and... Uh, don't follow uh, the teachings at all. Yeah, uh, same, and in fact, I Christians. heard today yeah. uh, on the news, I won't mention yeah. the person, but one politician actually said in yeah. an interview, he's a Christian. He said, but I'm not a very good Christian. So, <laughs> right, okay. You know, yeah. yeah. So. yeah. Um, was there any response from the UN to the Israeli ambassador's speech? Or was it complete silence, says Dory? Well, we don't know, but when the camera complete went silence. towards... Um, uh, um, sort of did a, um, a wide shot afterwards, it seemed that there were not a lot of people there and I wondered uh, if a lot of people there. had walked out. Yeah. That's what um, I thought. But as, as the ambassador said, he... he uh, Erdogan, wasn't it? Erdogan, yeah. Gilad Erdogan. Um, he just was, like, absolutely disgusted that... that there were so many other things that are going on in the world today, wars here, there and everywhere, and uh, they don't discuss 
those in the UN, but they do discuss what's happening in the Middle East. Yeah. OK, John says, a very insightful show, Howard and Leslie, and I also watched it last night. He says, here in Ireland, there's such vitriol against Israel. You have to be careful who you speak to about it. The ambassador laid it on the line to the mm. UN. It's great that you give a balanced view of things. A lot of high emotion being stirred up and anti-Semitism on the rise. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Well, let's go to, I think uh, this is the third and final part, third. okay, yeah. uh, of uh, Alon, Alon Bernstein. Let's have a look at this. Uh, what you see is a, is a mixed situation. They, they, there is a use of, of guerrilla warfare and what they call peaceful demonstrations and peaceful clashes, if you can call it so, uh, all the time, which creates a big confusion between the soldiers. It's very, very complex, complicated situation. What, what concerns me is I, I don't see this on the news where you've got the Palestinians with, uh, with you know, weaponry um, provoking an attack here as well on a, on a, on a <coughs> military because, outpost. Because the, the, the nobody can take these pictures. Nobody can take these pictures. It's very, very, very dangerous to take these pictures. And then why you see less of it and less of it. Even though the nights are full of incidents, there is exchange of fire um, every night in like 10 different places. Uh, what's amazing is uh, this whole revolution, uprising, is adapted to TV news times. During the day, there are demonstrations and they are, they are uh, performed around, around 10 or 12 o'clock, so there's enough time to take the pictures, edit it, and send it for the evening news in Europe and the States. So While the, 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 the nights are, are full of, of, of shooting incidents that cannot be covered at all and are not covered at all. What a, when I'm looking at this and I'm seeing Palestinian gunmen firing behind the children so the children are in the front you got the Israeli soldiers on the other side so right in the middle on the firing line it are the children so surely is it not possible that the the child the, the example was used uh, recently the Palestinian boy where all the sympathy was gained um, from from showing the pictures that, of, of that child being killed could that bullet have come from either side could it not have come from the Palestinian government I don't want to see children when shooting take place there is no excuse for involving children in armed conflicts period period this has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with parenthood. It has to do with the love of parents to their children. It has nothing to do with anything political, whether Israel should withdraw or not. I think Alon, keep the kids out of it. Out of it. I think uh, we anybody. I know. I speak for myself. Where is the UN? do they want to know but I would not allow my children to be there on the front line if I felt that strongly I would be there on the front line not them not at that age uh, as a parent I'm just speaking as a parent. I have three children and I think the the use of kids in this conflict is horrible and terrible but it evokes I emotions. I, I, I um, I feel the pain of the children that get hurt every day there. Whether I, 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 I don't think it's significant if they are Palestinians or Israelis. Just keep the kids away from danger. This is a basic instinct. See, there is a danger that what we see on the news is not always what uh, is, is happening. That, that's where I think we as a viewer can be very vulnerable because we're swayed and our emotions uh, obviously ride on what we see in the way that it's portrayed. Uh, I think that a lot of people around the world are very concerned now that the television news, 
that has enormous power when it comes to how people view political problems of any kind, because people watch TV more than they read newspapers, let alone books. And um, what you see is a, an involvement of the big American networks, for example, in political procedures. And the American elections is the best example. What you had is a network declared one of the candidates president when the count was not finished. And the, the, the difference between the two candidates is few hundred people. That means it's actually was uh, trying to affect the situation. This is not covering the event. This is being a side, being an active side in what is going on. And, and that's very wrong. Well, then is it time to be more responsible, in, in particularly when we see world events that can uh, arise, like in the Middle East, that could damage uh, not only the people living in the Middle East, but uh, throughout the world. This can affect the entire world, what happens in the Middle East. Television news is a prophecy that fulfills itself. Interesting. While covering the events and showing the events is actually telling whoever is involved in these events what to do and how to behave. It set the agenda, the, the trend, for big political procedures. So I think it should be given to people who have a great deal of understanding and responsibility. Unfortunately, it's not the case. The people that are involved in television news um, are uh, more busy drinking their beer in the local pub than reading books about history. And they don't have any perspective. It's very difficult when we uh, look at the news to see what is the truth and what isn't the truth. And God knows, literally, what the truth is. So, but we need to keep um, an open mind as what we're seeing uh, is it representative of what is really and truly happening? Uh, please uh, join us again for another program of Revelation. Thank you. You've been watching Revelation, the program with a biblical perspective. Okay, uh, in, in light of the time that we've got left, which is very little, I want to end on a positive note because when I was there, uh, and I've been to Israel many times, and I spent time with uh, Israelis and I spent time with Palestinians and the Arabs as well, and this is very positive of what I'm going to be showing you next, literally just three minutes long. Have a look at this. Okay, well, I've been told to keep talking, so I don't know what happened to it. In the meantime, let me just read yeah. out an email. Well, well, we won't have time, Liz. <laughs> oh, we do? Okay. I just want Go to on. say, says Jeremy, how shocked I feel by the response to my earlier email from Mary um, about standing with Israel um, by another one of your viewers. She suggests that because I stand with Israel, I'm not born again. I say, judge yeah. not. Yeah. To talk of counterfeit Jews is just another anti-Semitic trope. I would remind your correspondent that the Lord blesses those who bless Israel and will curse those who turn on his people. That's really well said, Jeremy, because it's true. You can't get away from what God says. That's right. But we, we've got to get to this positive uh, uh, Arab uh, who's very, very much pro-Israel. Have a look at this. I lived with Jewish for 40 years, let's say, since I am a baby. And we used to have a neighbor, neighborhood. All the neighborhood used to be part Jewish, part, part Arab. We used to, to visit each other. We used to eat, to eat with each other and even to spend some time. And now, after I grow up and I went to school, I have some friends, uh, Jewish friends, and now I'm working with 53 Jewish, and I'm only the Arab who's working there. So I really have a very good relationship. It's not only me. It's many friends I know, Arab friends I know. They also have many Jewish friends. Even they're working together, they're spending time together. What I hear, it's not really uh, true. Maybe it's all the uh, polit polit Politics, it's make it really big, but it's it's not, it's not. How do you feel? And I feel really happy about the Jewish coming back because it's in the Bible. 
and all the Jewish need to come back. It's their land, and we can live together here as one. As we know, we can live now, so we can live all the time together. So why, why not? But we've seen tremendous, wonderful testimonies of a Jew, say, who would come here, who hated Arabs, who didn't want anything to do with Jesus. Something changed in my heart, and uh, it's nothing that I can explain because it's supernatural. It's the Spirit of God that, uh, like you said, take your stone heart and give you a flesh heart. So how do you feel about Arabs now? They are my brothers. I feel uh, the same that I feel as Jewish people, the same as I feel to you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the first night that uh, Raja was at House of Victory, he was crying. And uh, we have a meeting, had a meeting there, and I said, Raja, why are you crying? I thought he was afraid of going through withdrawal because heroin addicts. How, how long were you on drugs? Nine years. Nine years. How long were you on drugs, Danny? Ten. Ten years. And Jesus set them both free and filled them with the Holy Spirit. So I said, well, let me pray for you. I said, I think you should stay in this room tonight. Let me show you the bed. Danny was in the room. <laughs> but Danny had become a believer. So I asked Danny, would you... Would you uh, Pray for Raja. What happened when he came to pray for you? You know, I was so afraid in the beginning that I can't sleep for three days. But later on, Danny came and he asked, can I pray for you? And he prayed for me and then something changed in my heart. That's really, I have, like David say, stone's heart. And God changed it and give me a pure and clean heart. That I can accept him like a brother to me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right, let's try and sneak in uh, something else as well before we uh, close in the next 58 seconds. Done. Oops, got, oh, okay. Go Good evening, Cynthia. She says, my friend and I from church had a prayer time this evening to pray for the youth at university through these protests going out regarding pro-Palestinians. Not only that, we have Christian children at university, so we felt it important to pray for them but also for the Jewish students as well. Shalom, Howard and Leslie, thank you for allowing us to see all that information about the Middle East conflict. If only it could be shown on mainstream TV stations, at least it's the truth. Yeah, well, thank God that we have Revelation TV. It was shown initially on secular TV, but what I want to say is God has a promise. Look at Isaiah chapter 19, and there's a prophecy there that you and Arab will come together in peace and harmony.